There's a little something for the rail fans. Train on a siding outside of San Antonio. Thanks to Greg for that footage, much appreciated. Let's take a look at that surface map. We are dealing with more cold air moving south out of Canada. Temperatures dropping into the 30s and 40s. We've got snow around Rockford, the Quad Cities, back towards Des Moines. And elsewhere, out to the east, some rain moving through the Great Lakes area. And right there you can see the results of all that cold air advection. An unstable weather regime across the Midwest. This is all cumuliform cloud. Got open cell cumulus right there in Indiana and Ohio. And it goes to a more closed cell appearance further out to the west. What's responsible for all that cold air is a ridge across the Dakotas. That's helping to create a pressure gradient that's pushing that cold air into the Midwest. Now, 24 hours ago, we had quite a windstorm across the central U.S. covering a very large area. Let's run that back to yesterday. And there you can see gusts of over 50 in Kansas. Right there, blowing dust was reported from Kansas all the way into Texas. And those gusty winds extended way up into Manitoba and Saskatchewan. And with that cold air coming south, we have various freeze and frost warnings across the central U.S. and around the periphery, a variety of red flag and fire watches. And then heading out into the Pacific, a large 1040 millibar high west of California, North of that, we've got this long fetch of North Pacific air coming to the northwestern U.S. Weather system across Alberta. Got that lee side trough established in the northern Rockies and then further out to the west. The cold air is coming in just like in the Midwest. Unstable conditions, showery weather, and gusty northwest winds. Then looking up in Alaska... That cold air that we talked about on Wednesday has moved into the remainder of the state, at least in the central part. Temperatures very cold, minus 19, just east of Nome, and minus 24. I think that town is Kotzebue. Anyway, minus 24, very, very cold for this time of year. Out ahead of it, rather mild conditions, 30s and almost 40 degrees in parts of Yukon. Then heading on to the Atlantic, not very much going on. Some cold air returning to the Canadian high Arctic, and then off into the Atlantic region, just not much going on. Looks like Newfoundland is going to be in for another couple days of inclement weather. So clearly not very much going on this afternoon. But if we look at the upper levels, we can see a couple of systems. One is this very large, old occluded low across the eastern U.S., a jet right around the periphery of that system right there. But it looks like the dynamic's not really all that strong. You can see the magnitude right there of that couplet. That's going to be one trough, but it's not very intense. There is a slightly stronger trough up there in Maine, which is going to be heading out of the area. Back behind it, ridging coming in from the Great Plains. And here you can see some stronger troughs right there off of Washington and up in southeastern British Columbia. Those will be riding over the ridge, possibly breaking it down somewhat, and maybe in a couple days we'll be contending with that out in the eastern U.S. And then more troughing out in the Pacific. So that's the current situation. Let's see how it all evolves. Running that forward. Yep, we're breaking down that ridge as those troughs move into Montana and Saskatchewan. Another trough descending the backside of that large-scale trough into Alabama and Mississippi. This is going to be tomorrow morning. Not sure if we're going to have enough moisture for that trough to work with. That's going to move quickly offshore, the Midwest region getting this ridge, and then things go downhill in the central Rockies. That's going to be tomorrow night. 
And then that first large trough emerges into the central plains for Sunday. A little bit of a respite. And then for the 12th, things get stormy out west once again. And it looks like much of the Great Plains will be interacting with that troughing. As I've pointed out often during the past couple weeks, the boundary layer moisture, the winds, and the pressure, those are all critical in April and May. And fortunately, we can get that all with a 925 millibar dew point. This is up at about 2,500 feet. So this gives us a good average of what's happening in the boundary layer. Well, we've really cleared out that moisture. The good Maritime tropical air is pushed into the southern Gulf and into the Bahamas and Cuba. And with that north flow, it's continuing to exit the region. So what we're going to watch out for is this return flow setting up in northeast Mexico and south Texas. That starts to take hold on Saturday, but it's not coming very far north. Some sparse moisture making it up into south Texas for Sunday. Then later in the day, it appears we squeeze out maybe some 50s dew points. Let's check out Dallas-Fort Worth. Yeah, dew points starting to come up into the lower 60s, actually, but very well capped. That's really a rapid moisture return. We don't really like to see that on a severe weather day if we're out chasing, for example. But some moisture does make it up, and we see that triple point become established Sunday night. So there could be a few showers and storms, perhaps in Oklahoma, but that is a pretty strong cap. Strong push of cold air coming south and then stalling out across Texas for Monday. The flow highly veered across north Texas, so I'm not sure we're going to see much with that. And then the moisture heads north for Tuesday and Wednesday. Maybe some chances for storms across the Great Plains on those days. And then we clear it out once again. Another blast of cold air working southeast. Then the next shot of storms after that, maybe on the high plains for Friday and Saturday. And then pushing out into the I-35 corridor for Saturday, the 16th. Let's take a look at that forecast. We can see that cold air coming through the northwestern U.S. That'll be marching through the Rockies and then the return flow setting up in Texas for Saturday and Sunday. So you can see that take place right there. Strong pressure gradient in Texas. And then for Sunday evening, not much of anything developing. So that cap holding things pretty tight, but probably as the low-level jet gets established, we'll see some nocturnal storms going up east of I-35. Cold air continues to ooze southeastward. Now we see it spreading into the Midwest region. Some scattered storms along that boundary, and then another push of cold air working into the Rockies, and there could be some strong snow showers with that from the Dakotas down to Colorado for Tuesday. So once again, possibly more severe weather on the lower plains going into Tuesday and Wednesday. More cold air sweeps through the lower Mississippi River Valley, possibly an MCS in the southeastern U.S. Then after that, it's pretty indeterminate, but it does look very unsettled in the western states and in the Great Plains. And today we're looking at a very warm day in California. As I record this, it's almost noon in California, but we're already up to 80 degrees around Marysville, can see widespread mid 80s through Stockton and Modesto down to Fresno and even hotter in the Los Angeles region. Again, it's almost noon and we can see that Santa Ana is up to 97, 93 at LAX and inland, the Inland Empire, lower 90s. And with that, we'll probably be setting records for today. Burbank expected to come up to 100 degrees, 96 at Camarillo, breaking the record by 10 degrees, and San Diego expecting 92, breaking their record by 5 degrees. Looks like some moderation for tomorrow in California as that cold front 
works its way eastward. However, record lows expected for Mississippi and Louisiana. That cold air advection bring in some very cool overnight conditions tonight, and we're expecting 35 at Greenwood and 38 at Monroe. We see the tables turn for Sunday, starting to warm up there in the Great Plains 92 at Lawton. On the other hand, 36 at Arcata, California, with that cold air flowing in. And as that cold air in the eastern U.S. moves eastward, we'll see temperatures come down to 48 around Sarasota. Another cold one in the western U.S. Seattle did not plot, but they are expecting 35 on Monday morning. For Tuesday, Laredo coming up to 102, so it'll probably be hot in much of the southwestern parts of Texas. And there's the situation for Wednesday. Yeah, down there at the bottom, McAllen coming up to 101. Meanwhile, to the northwest, Missoula, Montana, that cold air, the next outbreak starting to spread through, and they're down to 22. Might as well check out that drought monitor while we're at it. No problems in the Midwest and southeastern U.S., but as you go west of the Mississippi River, up into the High Plains and the western U.S., some definite drought conditions, especially in West Texas. And here's our percentage of precipitation relative to normal from January 1st until today. So what we see here is that much of the Midwest and east central U.S. running about maybe one and a quarter to one and a half times the typical amount. Meanwhile, in the Great Plains, looks pretty bad. Maybe a quarter to a half of the typical precip, and it gets worse as you go west. So this could mean that the cap will be quite dominant during these severe weather episodes because much of the air that falls in behind the dry line during these powerful weather systems that originates from the plateau regions and the southwestern U.S. And if it's dry, it can heat up much more easily, and that means stronger cap temperatures. So we can't really translate that to a tornado risk or anything like that. That just tells us maybe strong caps are one thing that we'll contend with on a lot of severe weather days. And I think that's probably a good place to stop for today. I think when we come back Monday and possibly again on Wednesday, we'll be dealing with maybe a bit of severe weather. And we are having problems with CenturyLink service, keeping us busy, and I'm going to get back and work on that for a while. Nothing from Big Rig Steve. He is around the Chicago area. His stream is not up, so we'll check back in on him next week. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend. Here's some more footage from San Antonio. Enjoy, and we'll see you in a few days. Bye-bye.